questions, guys. Uh, so it's really a, a privilege to follow both Reggie and Jeff. I, I particularly enjoyed uh, Jeff's comments because I think that may be the first time in human history that the words Northern State Parkway have been greeted with enthusiastic applause. So that was uh, a very impressive trick to pull off, and uh, all speakers should learn from your example. Uh, and this is, I have to tell you, sort of a little bit of a surreal experience for me because uh, back, here we are, Model Congress 50, which is quite a milestone. Uh, Model Congress 23, uh, I was in Charlie's position. I was the, the general chair of, of Model Congress. And um, <laughs> but it go, goes downhill from there. Because <laughs> I, I, I remember, you know, folks coming back from like Model Congress 1, 2, or 3, there was someone actually running for the real Congress, trying to recruit volunteers. I remember thinking of these old guys, you know. And now here it is 27 years later, and I'm the old guy. So I'm feeling a little bit fragile about that. And then that was before the opening program, which has sort of pushed me into a full-blown midlife crisis. Because <laughs> I, I, say back in my day, we did not have uh, human statues. Uh, we did not have uh, an elaborate video production. That was a hell of a video, by the way. <laughs> that was like really, really impressive. I mean, basically the only words I understood were point of inquiry in the entire thing, but I, I could tell how much work went into it, and we, we didn't have music, we, you know, we didn't have any of that kind of stuff. So I, I'm, I'm really sort of feeling like a, a little bit of, um, of an old fogey here. And um, I, I kind of figure, and I, we, I mentioned this, we were sort of watching the proceedings in the booth, as long as I'm doing this, I, I may as well go into like full-blown old man, get off my lawn mode. Um, and, and suspend my usual instinct, which is to spend 20 seconds here and get off the stage, because I know none of you came here to hear a speech. And I'm actually going to spend about five minutes and just say something serious to you, if, if, if that's all right. And I, it, it comes from the heart, because this was such an important club to me. Because another thing that I remember from sitting in your shoes, and sitting in your chairs, I should say, uh, is the sense of idealism that I felt through Model Congress, the kind of purity as you get these issues put in front of you and you get to debate them at the level of principle without any of the sort of distractions that you might otherwise experience and really pour your heart into the discussions you have with, with friends and, and, and peers. And the sad truth is that that kind of idealism rarely survives contact with the real world. There are any number of reasons to be enormously cynical about the political process. You can see the gridlock in Washington, D.C., the hyper-partisanship, all the negativity. And I I'm telling you, not as just an observer, as a practitioner of politics, I will tell you that 80% of it is BS. It's, it's reducing complex issues into slogans. It is treating people as though they're not capable of looking more than 24 hours into the future. It's spending a lot of your time shaking the tin cup, asking for money. And so it's no wonder tons of people just kind of throw up their hands and say, to hell with it. I'm not going to get involved. But I want you to know there's also another way to look at it. Just quickly, if I can tell you a little bit about my, my family background. My father was born in 1927, my mother in 1933, both of them in Poland. And when my mom was six and my dad was 12, they were just cast out into a broken world. And they became ref refugees in Russia and in Central Asia and the Middle East. I mean, they were very lucky. Their nuclear families survived. Their extended families completely wiped out. My dad used to tell me stories about stealing boots from Russian soldiers and then selling them back to those same soldiers on the black market in order to feed his parents. And not so long ago, I saw a conversation between my mom and my uncle. And he was saying to her, do you remember when we were starving and mama used to sing to us and made us feel better? It's a conversation that kind of stops you dead in your tracks. So they came to this country in the 1950s with almost nothing. My mom didn't speak a word of English. She used to hang out at the UN so she'd feel like less of a stranger. And yet they were still able to provide for my older brothers and myself. I mean, think about the kind of life we have in Nourishell. I mean, I haven't had a hard day in my life compared to what they experienced. And they drew from their own life such a sense of gratitude almost a sense of reverence for what it means to live in a democratic society where we are free to think and act as we choose. And so I was always taught growing up that for all of the problems, the big problems, that you can name a dozen of them before breakfast, you don't 
dare be cynical about this process. Because this is the way we look at each other, and we look at ourselves in the mirror, and we decide what does it mean to be a good human being, and what are our responsibilities to each other in a strong and healthy community. That's what this is about. So my message to you, my plea to you, is to be neither cynical nor naive. To understand with clear and open eyes all of the imperfections and flaws and compromises and trade-offs that are inherent in the political process and yet recognize at the same time that it is worth doing, that it is worth applying yourself to it. Because if 80% of it is BS, the 20% that matters really matters. It's in that space that you provide millions of people with health insurance. It's in that space that you liberate whole nations. It's in that space that you pass the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act and provide for marriage equality. It's in that space that you provide funding that cures illnesses. All of that is worth the nonsense. And so I really hope that whether you are citizens or leaders, that for some of you the experience of being part of this club will have the same effect on your lives that it had on mine and give you the privilege of engaging in service in a way that lifts up a community and lifts up your neighbors and lifts up your families and helps us all in our imperfect ways struggle towards a better place. I congratulate you on 50 extraordinary years, congratulate you on all the work that went into this, and have a great Model Congress weekend. <laughs>